Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of Month of Macross. So just a quick disclaimer on today's video, it's going to be in a podcast format. I'm just going to sit here in front of the mic and speak my mind for the next 10 minutes or so. So if you're interested, you're more than welcome to stick around or you're like, ah, this is boring. Go do something else. You're more than welcome to. But today we're going to talk about one of the most controversial subjects regarding Macross, and that's Robotech. So before we go into the actual debate here about which is better, which one should you watch, stuff like that, let's first get this out of the way. What's the difference between Macross and Robotech? So here on the left we've got Macross, released in 1982 is a 36-episode anime series about interstellar warfare, pop idols, and transforming mecha. On the right here, we've got Robotech. Released in 1985, it's a three-season television series consisting of Super Dimension Fortress Macross, Super Dimension Cavalry Southern Cross, and the third season consisting of footage from Genesis Climber Mospeda. Now, please forgive me if I just mispronounced that. Now, Macross was its own show. Now, Robotech actually took all three of those seasons and actually tried to connect them story-wise. So essentially, each season takes place in a different part of the Robotech timeline. Now, it's also worth noting that anime wasn't really known to Western audiences in the US so much outside of shows like Speed Racer and Astro Boy. The way Macross was introduced to Western audiences was through Robotech. Now, Macross was not the only show that had this happen. Uh, another good example is uh, the super robot anime Mazinger Z. That got released in the States known as Transer Z. But when you think Mazinger Z, you don't think Transer Z, right? When most people think Macross, the word Robotech comes to their mind, especially in places like the US and Canada. But I've got to give credit to the Robotech side because when most people are referring to Robotech, they're referring to the first season of the show also known as Robotech, the Macross Saga. So this was very much a trend of the 80s, with uh, importing Japanese titles and kind of westernizing them just a little bit. So I realized why there's many more Robotech fans in the West than there are Macross fans. Now, I actually heard about Macross before I ever heard about Robotech, and this is how this happened. So I didn't grow up in the 1980s. I didn't grow up when Robotech was being aired on TV. Uh, my childhood was mostly focused on the late 90s and the early 2000s. So my childhood was very much focused on things like Toonami, watching Dragon Ball Z and Gundam Wing. So Gundam Wing is what got me hooked on Mecha, by the way. So thank you, Gundam Wing. And this was around the time that uh, Western importers of anime stopped altering the actual you know, content or slapping it together with some other anime that is completely unrelated. They simply added a dub, some English credits at the end, and that was it. So that was the thing. Because of my love of uh, Gundam, uh, I started using the internet really early on, right? This is the early days the internet had Earthlink, you know, all that stuff, crappy dial-up connection. And I discovered a website called Mecha HQ, or M-A-H-Q for short. Now this site was instrumental in fueling my Mecha addiction. So I could just sit there after school for hours and just look at pictures of all the different mechs. And after I got through everything Gundam related, I saw something here called Macross. And I said, hey, what is this? And I clicked on it and I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Transforming fighter jets. I grew up in an Air Force family, so uh, I saw these fighter jets on a semi-daily basis. And it was really fascinating. And I started reading about the anime and, you know, some of the other things about it. And I was just really fascinated. But... I realized there was no way I could watch this. This was before uh, you could stream anime online or, you know, I don't even think these were out on DVD yet or anything like that. So everything I knew about Macross, I read on Mecha HQ. Then lo and behold, about a year or two later, I was subscribing to Nintendo Power Magazine and I came across this in the magazine one day. It was a article talking about a game called Robotech Battle Cry. My instant reaction was, wait, isn't that Macross? Aren't those the Valkyrie fighters? What is this? And I read in, and now this is how I learned about Robotech. So I was really confused, to say the least. Now, granted, on Mecha HQ, they do discuss Robotech, but they really focus, they really keep their focus on the original Macross series and the subsequent sequels and OVAs and movies. 
So I was really confused. I was like, wait a sec, what is Robotech? Why is there a game being released for Macross under the name Robotech? Now, over the years, I finally got the chance to sit down and watch Macross, Robotech, all that stuff. And I've come to the conclusion that if you're a fan of Robotech, that's fine. That's great. That's how you got introduced to the entire Macross phenomena. The issue I really have here, and I don't even think this is an issue between Macross and Robotech so much, it's really an issue of the U.S. distributor, Harmony Gold. Now, for those of you that don't know, Harmony Gold is the one who helped import Macross, produced an English dub for it, slapped the title on for Robotech, and then merged the other two anime series together to create the Robotech universe. Robotech was popular, so I get it. This was the 80s, this was the time of importing anime, kind of westernizing it just a little bit, making it a little more viewer-friendly. Not to say the original Macross wasn't viewer-friendly, it's just, you know can't import a show with subtitles or you can't call it Macross, you can't have all these Japanese songs because people aren't going to understand it. That was very much the mentality of the 1980s. But here's the issue that really, really hits home when it comes to this. Granted, we have the internet nowadays and we know we can go online if we really want to watch Macross or any of the other shows, we can do that. But if you want to buy actual Macross content, you've got to go to eBay or elsewhere and you've got to find someone shipping that stuff in from Japan. That's the problem. You can't buy Macross content in North America or Canada because Harmony Gold will not allow it. They will not relinquish their so-called copyright on the series. It's bizarre. It's like they're living in, you know, a false reality where Macross was never popular in Japan and Robotech is, is the only thing that matters. So here, I'm going to read this. This next part I'm going to read, it's actually from the Wikipedia page for Harmony Gold. Now, yeah, it's Wikipedia, whatever. It's not so much of a source, but this sums up, in my opinion, the, the real issue with Harmony Gold and Robotech and Macross and that whole debacle. Harmony Gold, via its license of Robotech, is the co-copyright owner in the U.S. for images of Mecha from the component series of the show Super Dimension Fortress Macross, Super Dimension Cavalry Southern Cross, and Genesis Climber Mospeda. They have pursued multiple lawsuits against anyone using Mecha which even vaguely resemble these designs. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead here. The legal status of Harmony Gold's license to Macross is dubious. Harmony Gold's license from Macross came from Tatsunoko Production, but Japanese courts ruled that it was Studio Noi, or Studio... is it Studio New? I'm sorry, I can't pronounce it. Basically, that studio was the actual creator of the original Macross series. Basically, the Japanese courts ruled that Studio Noi controls the Macross intellectual property. The license Tatsunoko was given was only for international distribution outside of Japan, and does not allow them to control the intellectual property. According to the U.S. Copyright Office, Harmony Gold is the co-copyright owner. Harmony Gold is known for making broad-ranging claims on the Macross copyright and trademarks in order to extract payments from other companies. So, that's basically it. Harmony Gold is like the ultimate parasite. It's just really shitty, I can't think of any other way to describe it. I don't know. This whole thing just, it, it kind of frustrates me because Harmony Gold, yeah, they, they helped distribute Macross in the US with Robotech and that, that's great. It really got anime a... It really got Japanese anime, you know, on people's television sets, which is which is awesome. But it's been 30 years. Harmony Gold, you do not own Macross. Get over it. Furthermore, what's really, really upsetting is the fact that they've continued to expand their Robotech universe. And there's been talk of a live-action movie in a similar vein of, you know, something like Transformers. And in 2006, they actually teamed up with a uh, Korean animation studio and released a sequel to the original series called Robotech The Shadow Chronicles. Like, what? I mean, seriously, how can you actually get the rights to that? I mean, Robotech evolved into its own thing because of Harmony Gold. That's great, but everything they're basing it on, they do not own the rights to it. They do not own the intellectual property. Other than introducing audiences to Macross through Robotech, the only other thing I will, I guess, say I'm glad Harmony Gold did. So in the early 2000s, Harmony Gold actually got together and dubbed the original Macross series. Even better, they put it on DVD for sale. 
So if you really wanted to, you could go buy Robotech, all three seasons on DVD, or you could go buy the original Macross series, complete with an English dub, or you could watch it in Japanese with subtitles. But here's the main issue. So if you look on the DVD cover here, it says Harmony Gold at the bottom. It's just like a little shitty reminder that, hey guys, we're letting you get Macross this one time. Oh, and by the way, the DVD's out of print. I don't think we're gonna actually try to put it on Blu-ray like we are with Robotech. Sorry, guys. So yeah, that... I, I mean, that's good. You can, if you really want to hunt them down, you can go find the DVDs. I mean, since they're out of print, it's gonna cost you... Ooh, easily over $150 for the complete set. Yeah. So, again, that's just my beef with Harmony Gold. So yeah, that's about it, really. Again, I'm not hating on Robotech fans. If you grew up watching Robotech, I completely understand. that, that That's the show you grew up with. It, that's great. That's awesome. Or maybe you watched Macross first, and that's the show you prefer. Either way, you're entitled to your own opinion. So again, I think this all comes down to Harmony Gold once more, that... Come on, Harmony Gold, you, you, you can't be doing this. I mean, you can't seriously act like you own Macross. There's just no way. There's just no way. But that's about it. Anyways, I'm gonna keep working on Month of Macross. Thanks for watching this video. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Take it easy, and I'll catch you next time.